Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. The media is frankly bombarded with stories about asteroids making a near miss on our planet, but not a whole lot of solid facts as to whether or not any of these actually present a credible threat. NASA, of course, tells us that there's nothing projected to strike our planet in the next hundred years, nothing we need to be worried about anyway. But that isn't entirely true. There are three asteroids in particular that NASA never talks about that are projected to possibly hit our planet in the next 20 years or so. And even though none of these asteroids are planet killers, they're not tiny either. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. If you are unfamiliar with uh, my current uh, environment, well, so am I. I'm actually at the Royal Aeronautical Society. They gave me access to the Toulouse Room um, to make this content for you guys. Had to get something out today, and even though I am very eager to talk to you about the topic for this particular convention, which is space-based solar power and all the amazing amazing applications and technologies involved with this. Instead, we're going to be talking about something else that NASA says is impossible, and that is the prospect of an asteroid hitting us sometime in the near future, in the next 10 to 20 years. And even though we hear about some of the more famous asteroids, the ones that uh, come up in the media on a regular basis, which NASA once again says has no chance of hitting us, the POFUS, for example, Bennu, etc., there are some others on NASA's threat list that are smaller and have a chance of hitting us within the next 20 years, some of them a chance of hitting us in the next few years. And even though they may not be as big as Apophis, they're still big enough to create a serious problem. That is to say, if they were to drop anywhere near your home, they would completely ruin your day. In 2029, the asteroid Apophis will make an uncomfortably close approach to our planet, just over 30,000 kilometers inside the orbits of many of our satellites, and even a slight adjustment in that course caused by an impact of a micrometeoroid or even a near miss with another asteroid would change the course of Apophis onto a direct collision course, creating an explosion many times more powerful than the most powerful atomic explosion in history. We are talking thousands of megatons. But we don't need to go to these types of apocalyptic scenarios to run into asteroids that could be a really serious problem. There are smaller asteroids, also potentially on a collision course in the next 20 years, that would create some pretty substantial nuclear size explosions were they to impact our planet. The first of these is 2008 JL3, which is scheduled to possibly make contact with the Earth on the 1st of May, 2027. Yeah, three years from now. And even though this is a very small asteroid, estimated to be perhaps 29 meters in diameter, 29 meters still creates a massive explosion. Let's go ahead and plug in our values to my favorite little asteroid damage simulator to see exactly what this would do if, say, it were to airburst over New York. Yeah, it probably wouldn't survive to actually dig a crater, but it would airburst just a couple thousand meters over the city, which arguably would be far more devastating. We're talking nearly 8 megatons worth of explosive power. So let's go ahead and see what that does. Kaboom! Two million people would die in the fireball. A further two million would suffer third-degree burns, and most of those would probably die within the next couple of days. A further 3.4 million people would receive second-degree burns, and trees 
18 miles away from the impact zone would burst into flames, creating a massive inferno that would probably be pretty difficult to extinguish at least quickly, given the fact that FEMA doesn't have to deal with nuclear-sized explosions all that often. Oh, and if it doesn't hit on 2027, well, it's going to make another close approach in 2030, and then another close approach in 2034. In all, this little but still very dangerous asteroid will make a total of 10 close approaches to our planet, each one of which could result in contact before 2080. And we're just getting started. A similar asteroid is 2005 QK76, which is scheduled to make a close approach to our planet in February of 2030, and then again in 2038, and again in 2048. You get the idea, and the level of devastation that this asteroid is likely to wreak is going to be similar to the last one, so let's go ahead and see what happens when it hits the city of Antwerp. Yeah, let's go ahead and hit a less frequently destroyed city in disaster movies. Kaboom! Well, not nearly as many dead because Antwerp is not as heavily populated, but you're still looking at 300,000 killed outright, another 300,000 subjected to third-degree burns, a further half million suffering from second-degree burns, and like the New York impact, we're looking at a huge area of the Belgian countryside bursting into flames. And it's also important to note that asteroid impacts are virtually indistinguishable from thermonuclear explosions. They have all of the same characteristics, including the mushroom cloud and an electromagnetic pulse depending on how powerful the explosion actually is. If we don't know that one of these is about to impact, if it catches us by surprise and wreaks terrible destruction on a city like Antwerp, a NATO member, well, that could trigger a war. But let's go ahead and not talk about the worst worst case scenarios. Or perhaps we should, because we need to get to the biggest of these three asteroids and the one that could really do some damage. The asteroid in question is 2022 PX1, and we don't have to worry about this one until 2040. But you better hope that nothing happens in that year, because this asteroid would really tear a serious hole into our planet. It's only about 120 meters in diameter. Once again, not a planet killer, but substantially bigger than a football pitch. And if it were to impact, say, in the city of Tokyo, the level of devastation would transcend anything our species has ever experienced. We are talking a blast of about 200 megatons, four times more powerful than the Tsar Bomba, the most powerful nuclear bomb ever dropped by our civilization. Something like this would utterly destroy the entire city, killing millions of people with a combination of a devastating fireball, wind speeds faster than the winds on Jupiter within a distance of 8 kilometers of the impact site, and wind speeds in excess of an F5 tornado up to 30 kilometers away from the impact site. We are talking an explosion that would simply dwarf anything that has happened in recorded human history, a blast that would utterly dwarf even the volcanic explosion of Krakatoa. And if we were unlucky enough to have one of these asteroids plop down in the ocean, or at least an asteroid this big, the tsunami would still be utterly devastating. Not the tsunamis that are hundreds of meters high like we see in the movies, but still far more devastating even than the tsunami that killed hundreds of thousands on the coastline of Southeast Asia. And by the way, these are the asteroids that we know about, and we find new ones all the time. Asteroids that could potentially hit our planet 
just about any day of the week. It's something we should really be taking seriously, and also we should have a deflection plan in place right now. Not just an experiment that we forget about, we need another DART mission ready to go in case we encounter a threat like this sometime in the near future. So until we do, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe, and also consider supporting me on Patreon. I'm going to be bringing you a a lot of exciting new content here in the near future and as always stay angry about space